An excavating site with John Bowman, the uh, the owner and chief cook and bottle washer here. You have a long experience for a young looking guy like yourself uh, in this in this business. You started in construction in high school, right? Graduated high school in 2000. In February of 2001, I purchased yeah. the first skid loader. Valentine's Day. My my wife now, she was a girlfriend at the time. We're high school sweethearts. Yeah, that was her present that year. Oh, nice. <laughs> She's really that's, that's, happy that's with good. that. We paid it off, though, I think in the first year. Did you have any experience in construction before that? Coming out of high school, I went to work for a, a carpenter as a general laborer, and he had a skid loader. And he quickly learned that I had a knack for running equipment. Okay. Only worked for three months uh, through the summer of 2000, and then off to Rala in the fall of 2000. So you were working working with your skid steer loader while you were in, in college? Absolutely, yes. Okay. And, and also while in college, to supplement the education, I, I did an internship with MoDOT. Okay. So I, that's where I learned the, the bigger, heavy highway civil construction. Okay. Talk about uh, a job that you remember from college. What was that that learning curve like and, and what kind of things did you uh, get yourself into? So. Uh, working for MoDOT, it was a new day every day, but I was fortunate enough to be on the page extension, so 364. So we basically started at the Missouri River Bridge and the Highway 94 and 364 interchange. I think the project had seven bridges. I learned a lot about bridge construction, concrete construction, concrete curing. Now I was learning this in school, but now I'm seeing it in real life. Right. One of my pet peeves to this day is when you come off of a bridge, and you have the settlement issue, the little dip. We worked very hard to have good results and we still had some settlement issues yeah, there. Yeah. It's uh, just a natural, I guess, on the bridge approach. I did learn that, but uh, it opened my eyes, met a lot of people, some people actually uh, still keep in contact with today. What were your first projects like? Any excitement there? We did a lot of yard jobs, you know, just being with a skid loader and I had a small single axle dump truck. You know, hauling dirt in and grading some yards. I mean, we had one instance where we graded this yard one time and it, it looked great, the grass came up, but he had dogs. And he turned his dogs loose on a brand new lawn immediately. Now, the dogs ruined the yard and he called and said, John, I just don't know what happened. I said, well, you let your dogs run on it. He said, no, not much. And I said, well, I've got pictures. And he said, well, what does it take to make it look like a golf course? And I said, how about a load of manure? We're gonna bring two more loads of topsoil and we'll mix that in. It came up pristine. He was the happiest guy ever. He's still referring customers to this day. We carried that on from 2001 through 2004 with my first unit. Mm -hmm. And then I, I purchased another skid loader in 2004. Kept that for a short time. And I believe it was 2006, May of 2006, that I bought my first cat track skid steer. And I was probably a little bit behind the times, but really tracks were sort of new then on skid loaders. Right. They've really reinvented the construction industry. Skid loaders now are so quick and agile and yeah. efficient. We bought a uh, a 262 cat skid steer with aftermarket VTS undercarriage. Okay. So this was before cat actually was putting their dedicated track units on. We bought that and shortly thereafter a 953C, I bought a cat high lift or track loader yeah. and then also a Peterbilt dump truck. This time I'm a half a million dollars in debt and 24 years old and wow. ready to take on the world and I think boy as soon as all this is paid off I'm going to have it, have the world uh, in my hands. I'm still waiting for that day. I just thought, just four more years. What brought you to that decision to, to, to get into a track loader and truck? I knew I wanted to grow. You know, so chasing this dream and, and the track loader was so universal and it was fairly light. You know, 40,000 plus or minus on a 953C, 42, 44,000 pounds. Yeah. I could pull it behind a dump truck. So minimal startup cost. I was in business and able to tackle a pretty good sized project. You know, one of our first projects was building a pond after I bought the 953C. So mm -hmm. I wasn't able to do that prior to having that 953. So sure. it opened up to a larger market. What do you consider to be the, the sort of the next big step after that in your business? In 2012, we purchased an excavator and then shortly thereafter we bought, it was a 50,000 pound 321 excavator. We bought a D6N mm -hmm. cat dozer. At that point, we added GPS and the world just opened. Yeah. We had some customers call and they saw that we were growing and had this equipment. And then when we added the technology concept to it, people learned that they weren't paying nearly as much for staking. We were taking care of, their, taking care of ourselves on the job. I feel like the skies opened. What was it about GPS technology that, that 
uh, convinced customers that you were the one to work with. But they may have paid $30,000 to a civil engineer to draw these plans. And when they learned that we could plug that into our equipment, we would put it, load in our equipment and see right away what we were doing. They quickly realized that they were not paying their surveyor as much. The customers have seen the efficiencies with that and, and really let us run with it. That was 2012? That's correct, 2012. Okay. Now, I had experience for my previous employer since 2006. Mm -hmm. He bought his first unit and put it on a D6N in November of 2006. Okay. Right. So I got my feet wet in learning GPS and the Rover and, and everything, but he had a Trimble system as well. That's where the relationship started with GPS, but it was limited. We've since added it to multiple machines. We have it on everything from, um, well, recently a skid loader and also an excavator. We have it on two scraper tractors and uh, five or six dozers. So 2012, what was the state of your competitors primarily in GPS? I mean, were, were you on the front edge of that adoption at that level? We were in the middle to tailing because we were limited. We only had one unit and it was really ramping up. But if you remember, you know, 2008, 2009, the recession in there, thankfully I was small growing through that. Mm -hmm. I was in the seat myself, so it helped control the expenses. I think now we're, we're keeping up with the industry for sure. We've yeah. caught up. I mean, how many employees and how many pieces? 45 machines mm -hmm. and 28 employees, six or eight trucks, you know, whether they're dump trucks and dumps, float trucks, you know, the right. supplementary equipment. It's right. not what we really do. It's part of our business, but the grading side of the world is where we right. really thrive. And you're up to scrapers. We run some old Challengers, 95E oh. Challengers. They're bulletproof and the Challengers are narrow. So the mobilization is easy run those on a trailer. We were able to load a trailer and a, a scraper on one float and oh. we can mobilize and hop around jobs. We had one here working on this job site. It's about 10 acres here. What's your revenue range? Our happy spot, five to seven, five to eight million. We've been growing every year. If we can keep pricing in line and hopefully revenue grows, you know, to keep up with fuel pricing. I've seen too many competitors grow too fast. Mm and then go away very quickly. So where do you feel like the greatest risk is in, in growth and growing too fast, as you said? The biggest fear for me is probably the loss of a customer. So if you grow too fast and you, you, can, you can load up on employees, but they're not a quality of employees, we could lose a customer as fast as we gained one. We have a very strong customer base, but you know, if we lose a million dollar a year customer, that could be a crucial, crucial piece of our business and, and gone in a split second. Yeah. I always tell my employees, customers first. You got to keep growing. What's, what's your next step? I feel like I've achieved most of my goals. Maybe I didn't set them high enough. I do not want to be the largest guy in town, but I do want to provide that quality service and craftsmanship, you know, that we're known for. If we grow on a uh, five to 10% growth over the next five years, I'm completely happy. And if we have good guys, we'll try to push forward just as we are. are. Are you at a point now where you're keeping crews year round? I mean, you're, you're keeping your good guys? Generally, yes. We do, we do scale up during the summer. You know, we might pick up two or three. The 28 pretty well have run all winter long. Now I'll tell you that it, it was sort of a long winter here in St. Louis, you yeah. know, just with the, the snows and the moisture, it rained, it rained or snowed every Thursday for the last six or eight weeks. So that was, that was tough for a lot of guys. You know, we could get two or three days in, but some of the guys that were lower on the food chain, it got it got tricky, you know, and we try to find odd jobs and things like that to pick up, you know, concrete demos and things like that. Well, thanks so much, John. I appreciate it. It was a great story. You bet. Thank you, Larry. <laughs>